Hey, hey, hey. So we're back at it again. Got our Septuagint with us. And we're in it for now. These uh, be spiritual gumbo. All gold. Everything. Like a, like a question. And uh, this is a very, very interesting chapter. This would be the 26th chapter. Oh, 25th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, the Exodus. And obviously, we left off where the chosen people, the chosen elders, and I contend that these same 70 elders, uh, uh, later on in, this, in the story, the burden becomes too much for Moses. So the Lord takes the spirit that he has on Moses and puts it on 70 other individuals. I can't be sure that these are the same elders from that instance, but I'm just going to assume that some of them are for sure. Having said that, though, the 70 that came up that just got to see God from a distance were called the chosen. Mm. Very interesting. There's a great sacrifice, and Moses goes up into the mountains. And he's going to come down with more ordinances. Uh, like I told you guys, the story seems to be written so much so that we don't... It's hard to disseminate when Moses got certain commands, if you get what I'm saying. So... When we read something that sounds like it's repeating itself, it's more or less verification to what we read before. Verse 1 of chapter 25. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and take first fruits of all who may be disposed in their heart to give. And ye shall take my first fruits. Stop right there. Did you hear that? So you're only going to take the first fruits from those who are willing to give the first fruits. And this, verse 3, and this is the offering which she shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and double scarlet and fine spun linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed, red and blue skins and incorruptible wood and oil for the light, incense for anointing, incense for anointing oil, and the composition of incense, and for the composition of incense, and sardius stones, and stones for the carved work, for the breastplate, and the full length robe. Stop right there. He's telling them to get all the materials that they're going to need to make everything that he's going to tell them to make. Going forward, we're not going to get carried away with what's about to be made. Just keep it in mind. because it, it, It'll all be explained. But clearly, he wants, the Lord is telling him to get very nice things. And the incorruptible wood, I will tell you this right now. Wood that is corruptible means that it, it, it oxidizes at a much higher rate. So it's going to corrode and fall apart. Incorruptible wood doesn't oxidize like that last technically forever I guess verse 8 and thou shalt make a sanctuary and I will appear among you and thou shalt make for me according to all things which I shew thee in the mountain so he's talking to Moses right now he's telling Moses what's about to go down he's telling him how I want you to do this and he's like, and when you make the sanctuary, I'm going to be among you. I, I'm going to appear among you. Verse 9. And thou shalt make for me according to all the things which I will shew thee in the mountain, even the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture. So, so shalt thou make it. And thou shalt make the art of, of, of testimony of incorruptible wood. The length of two cubits and a half. And the breadth of a cubit and a half. And the height of a cubit and a half. Now understand, one cubit is roughly three feet. Okay? So, 
it's a, uh, it's a, uh, let's say seven feet, seven and a half feet by uh, four and a half feet by four and a half feet. So it's pretty big. It's not a little thing. No, nope. he said to make it out of incorruptible wood first. Me and Andre had this wonderful talk the other day. We'll go. I'll I'll go into the dialogue with some of the, some of what we talked about here in a moment. And thou shalt gild it with pure gold, meaning cover it. And thou shalt gild it within and without. So whatever is is, is hollowed right on, you're going to fill that with gold. And whatever's without, you're going to fill it with gold. Now, me and Andre were talking the other day. Just based on these measurements and these dimensions alone, if it was made out of pure solid gold, he was like, it took like two elephants to carry this thing. You know, he's like, because no oxen, no men would, no, men would not have wanted to carry that. You know. Men would not have wanted to carry that. Pure gold, seven feet one way, four and a half feet either other direction, please. That thing would be so heavy, it wouldn't even be crazy. It would, it, would, it would be so crazy, it wouldn't even be funny anymore. Like, it would just be like, it would almost be punishment. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would almost be punishment. But the gold, though, while we're on this rate, is gold, as we all know, is the highest conduit, uh, 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 has the highest level of conduitivity out of all the metals. So it has the highest energy output. Just something for you to think about while all these things are going to be plated with gold and made of gold. Just think about that. And thou shalt make for it golden reefs, twisted round about. And thou shalt cast for it four golden rings. And thou shalt put them on the four sides. Two rings on the one side, and two rings on the other side. Thou shalt make staves of incorruptible wood. And thou shalt gild them with gold. So, all gold everything. Follow me. This is why, this is why I said that, because it's like, you're going to hear how many things are actually have gold with them, you know, and the more important they are, the more gold they have. And thou shalt put, excuse me, and thou shalt make the staves of incorruptible wood and shall gild them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings on the sides of the ark to bear the ark with them. The staves shall be the staves shall remain fixed in the rings of the ark, and thou shalt put into the ark, and thou shalt put into the ark the testimonies which I shall give thee, and thou shalt make a propitiatory uh let me let me say it right a propitiatory. Um, what the heck is it? I cannot think of it to save my life right this moment, but I do know what it is. Um, a lid of pure gold, the length of two cubits and a half, and the breadth of a cubit and a half. And thou shalt make two cherubs graven in gold, and thou shalt put them on both sides of the propitiatory. And I'm pretty sure that's like the, uh, it's like the ark, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's actually the actual ark itself when it's made, if I'm not mistaken. They shall be made, one cherub on this side and another cherub on the other side of the propitiatory. And thou shalt make the two cherubs on the two sides. And the cherubs shall stretch forth their wings above, overshadowing the propitiatory with their wings. And their faces shall be toward each other. The faces of the cherubs shall be toward the petition, shall be, shall be towards the propitiatory. And thou shalt and thou shalt set the propitiatory on the ark above, and thou shalt put into the ark the testimonies which I shall give thee. So the propitiatory is like it's actually like a part of the ark. I forget what, how it said it online when I looked it up last week. I just can't think of the exact definition, so I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. But um, it's, it, it really is actually part of the ark, though. It's not something that's not part of it. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, my phone is in here right now. Give me one second. Let me pull up my internet and Google this real fast. Terrible, I know. <clears throat> Pro, that's right. First word I start to type in. So it's it, it and and this meaning, right? Uh it's pretty much how you give atonement, you know what I'm saying? Right? But the propitiatory here, it never leaves. So this is where you would go to give sacrifice to atone, but it's still a part of the ark. Okay. Got that out the way. <sighs> now where were we? Where were we? Cherubs, bang, bang, bang. Verse 22. Nope, verse 21. And thou shalt set the propitiatory on the ark above, and thou shalt put in the ark the testimonies which I shall give thee. And the testimonies are going to be the laws, the ordinances, the injunctions, the commandments, the statutes. Can you dig it? And I will make myself known to thee from thence, and I will speak to thee above the propitiatory between the two cherubs, which are upon the ark of the testimony, even in all things which I shall charge thee concerning the children of Israel. And thou shalt make a golden table of pure gold. A golden table of pure gold. Obviously, it's very important. In length, two cubits. And in breadth, a cubit. And in height, a cubit and a half. And thou shalt make for it golden reefs round about, and thou shalt make for it a crown of a hand breadth round about. A hand width. And thou shalt make a twisted wreath for the crown round about, and thou shalt make four golden rings, and thou shalt put the four rings upon the four parts of its feet under the crown. And the rings shall be for bearings for the staves, that they may bear the table with them. And thou shalt make the staves of incorruptible wood. And thou shalt gild them with pure gold. And the table shall be born with them. Are you hearing that? So this table's pure gold. Pure gold. Has a crown on it and everything. The Ark of the Covenant is not pure gold. The only difference is that this thing is not seven, seven and a half feet in length. It's only, uh, 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 two cubits in length, so six feet in length. It has the width of about three feet and the height of about four and a half feet. So it's considerably smaller, even when you think about it, but it's pure gold now. So it's probably just as heavy, if not heavier. Oh, people are, people are carrying this. If it has four staves, those staves are not for animals. Those staves are for men to carry. Two on the side, two on the front. So that way all the weight is evenly distributed and no one person is carrying more weight than the other. That's how it's supposed to work. Going forward. Verse 25 again. And thou shalt make a twisted wreath for the crown round about. And thou shalt make four golden rings. And thou shalt put the four rings on the four parts of its feet under the crown. So the feet of the actual table, that, that's, that's, that's under the crown. You're going to put the rings there. You're not going to put them above the crown. You're going to put it to where it's under the crown so that when they pick it up, it holds it. And the ring shall be bearings for the staves, that they may bear the table with them. And thou shalt make the staves of incorruptible wood, so wood that's not going to fall apart. And thou shalt gild them with pure gold, all gold everything. And the table shall be borne with them. And thou shalt make its dishes, and its censers, and its bowls, and its cups, which, with, with, excuse me, with which thou shalt offer drink offerings, of pure gold shalt thou make them. All gold, everything. 
and thou shalt set them upon the table, shewing, uh, and thou shalt set them upon the table, shew bread before me continually. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, and thou shalt make the candlestick of graven work. Its stem and its branches and its bowls and its knops, which are pretty much like the, uh, it's almost like a stem, you know what I'm saying? Which is kind of weird that they would say stem in one part and then say knops. It's knops and it's lilies. It's like the, you know, like the wine glass or whatever, like, like a glass like this. This part right here in the middle is considered the knop. Ugh. <sighs> Verse 31, and thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Thou shalt make the candlestick of graven work, its stem and its branches and its bowls and its knops and its lilies shall be of one piece. So it's saying that when you make it, you won't, you won't sep you won't make separate little pieces of it. It's going to be one piece of gold that you form into the way that I'm telling you to do it. Verse 32, and six branches proceeding sideways, three branches on the candlestick from one side of it and three branches of the candlestick from the other side and three bowls fashioned like almonds on each branch, a knot and a lily to the six branches proceeding from the candlestick. And in the candlestick, four bowls fashioned like almonds. In each branch, knops and flowers of the same. And they knop under two branches out of it. And they knop under four branches out of it. So to the six branches preceding the candlestick, and to the candlestick, four bowls fashioned like almonds. Let the knops, let the knops and the branches be of one piece. All together, graven of one piece pure gold so you know what's what this makes me actually think of this makes me think of where they got the concept for hanukkah you know what I'm talking about with the actual uh, a candle that's made like that that's the first thing that this made me think of right on and that's where they stole that concept from it's not just out of the book of maccabees or whatever uh, it's actually right here when they're first given, when Moses is first given the true idea of what's supposed to be made. Right. I, I want y'all to understand this. Why would Moses need to have done all these things if he knew all these things already? He would, there, there would have been no need to take the people way out the land. They could have just done a hostile takeover in Egypt if he, if he had a complete grasp of the situation. Clearly he didn't. So it's like this man is being told all these things that are pretty much brand new to him. And I would contend that no nation before what you're hearing right now did exactly what he's telling them to do. I'm just going to go forward. Otherwise, there'd be a bunch of arcs of the covenants that the world would know about. This wouldn't be the only one. Right. And think about how much gold they must be in possession of to do all these things. So where we at? Verse, seven, verse 37. And thou shalt make it seven lamps. Hmm. Kind of like Hanukkah, right? And thou shalt set on it the lamps. And they shall shine from one and they shall shine from one front. So they're all pretty much going to say, like, you can only, see, you're going to see it from that, from that one place. Right on? Because it's probably going to be covered. And thou shalt make its funnel and its snuff dishes of pure gold. Pretty much things that you're not going to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the fake stuff. All these articles shall be a talent of pure gold. See thou make them according to the pattern shew thee in the mount. Mm. That's the end of chapter 25. 
I'm going to come into chapter 26 and I'm just going to cut it off because chapter 26 is now pretty much being told how to not only dress like the tabernacle, but also how he wants uh, 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 his priest to look. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, uh. His warrior, his warrior priest, you know. We're going to be getting into a whole lot of what he wants Moses to do and how things are put together. And there's, and there's more, and this is more instructional now. You see what I'm saying? And this is where the, this is where it gets meaty because I have to take the time, like I always do, read the chapters, let my mind think about it for a little while, go back to it and read it again sometimes to see if I, if I, if I, if I miss something or if I don't have it right. And, um, with these next ones, we just need to just make sure that we're all on the same page. You know what I'm saying? But if you guys could imagine, or if you go and look up the picture of like the Hanukkah, uh, a uh, uh, candlestick, th that is the idea of what was being explained without me get going too far and getting too carried away. Um, it's a blessing. To be able to deliver this to y'all, it really is. It's a blessing. I hope that you guys enjoy it. I enjoy it. I'm ready for these whenever. And uh, spiritual gumbo out.